Our guest for this episode is co-founder and president of XLA CoLab, an advisory board member for HIL24K, an external advisor for the Royal Skiffle Group for data, digital, innovation, and strategy. He's got a long tenure of transformative work at Philips, ING, Tata, BMC, HP, to name a few. Welcome to Ticket Volume, news and information for improving IT experiences. Powered by Invigate. Alan Nance, welcome to Ticket Volume. Matt, it's great to be here. We had an opportunity to meet recently and I saw you at HDI. I love your energy. You've got a lot of energy and some great ideas. So well, let's get right into it. We're seeing the rise of experience management as a proven method of innovation and collaboration. It's like a, it's a saving grace for poor processes and tone deaf communication and myriad, myriad of other opportunities for it. Why does this work so well? Well, I, I think it's interesting. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to own all those things you just said about <laughs> poor processes. But what I would say is that we've been optimizing service management since 1990. You know, I was the keynote speaker at the launch of ITIL in 1992. And ever since then, ITSM has become more powerful, better, uh, more rounded. But what we're seeing is that even the companies that are at the top of their game are not recording positive employee and customer experience. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, even even last week, you, you referred to HDI. We had people in, in some of my sessions who said, you know, we're maxed out on SLAs. Everything is green. You know, we are just perfect. We've, we've got our critical response times down. You know, our major incidents are down, but the people are still not happy. And so mm -hmm. I think... I think that's one thing. I think we've reached the end of service management with all respect. But I also think something else is happening, and that is that we're transitioning out of the service economy, which has dominated our lives since uh, since Thatcherism and Reaganism. And now we're in the experience economy that was sort of ushered in by Apple and the App Store and accelerated by the pandemic. So those two things together, I think, are what's spurring the market right now. Ah, oh, that's such a good way of thinking about it. You know, I, there, we've got product management and service management and then experience management. It really is like, hey, we're going to deliver experiences through products and services. That's fantastic. Uh, when we spoke recently, you mentioned the optimization framework. Can you go into that a little bit? Well, one of the things that we've learned over the last few years is that for an enterprise to change, it's it's quite a, a shift, right? So we've learned a lot about process management over the last 20 years. And we all understand that organizational change management is a thing. Um, so what we needed was um, basically a blueprint of how you could move from where you are to where you need to be. And so the uh, experience optimization framework, um, it's it's not magic. It really is more of a... Uh, uh, a framework where you can hang your clothes on it. Uh, and it's got five areas to it. It starts with explore, which is really to understand the experience landscape that you have today. And, the, and then it goes into um, envision. Where do you want to take this? Uh, do you want to do small steps? Do you have a bigger thing? Or do you already have a problem you have to solve? And then we go to enable. What's it going to take for you to create XLAs, uh, to create the tooling that supports that or adjust the tooling that you have to support that. And then we have execution, which is really about how do you build an experience management office? What are the skill sets you need in there? And then we end up with uh, embrace, which is really how do you connect what we do in the experience management space to others like the CX people, the mm -hmm. UX people, the BX people, the mm -hmm. DX people. There's a ton of other experienced specialists out there. And, and we're going to do the best thing for the employees, the suppliers and the customers where we link those things together. But we, we have to be stronger ourselves before we're credible partners in that journey. And for each of those five um, areas, we've assembled between five and six key concepts that enable you to to go through those phases in your own journey. Okay, I love that. I love a framework to get people to understand and buy into a concept, and then like it's sort of like a maturation cycle you can go through to continue right. to add add elements into your experience um, perspective. Indeed, and, and of course, experience management is very different from service management. Mm for one reason, and that's humans. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, if I, if, I can, if I design an ultra high availability network, it is going to work every day 
according to the KPIs that I set until something's broken. If I design the best meal you've ever had, but I give it to you five days in succession, on day six, you're like, I'm done with this. <laughs> so people are self-programming sensors. And that means that experience management and XLAs are much more volatile mm. than the underlying service management processes that support them. Oh, that is such a good point. We talk about this in leadership all the time, how you can take one coaching situation and one person and it can work one day and the next day it just doesn't work completely. I love that. It really, you've, you've really hit on the, the sticky point of what, what makes humans complex. So um, one persona that keeps having issues, it, I love tying service management to experience management. And one persona that continues to just bear the brunt of so much of of service management is the agent um, we yeah. see agents you know it's probably one of the most common themes in our industry right now how to hire agents how to get um, into IT as a get a foot in the door without experience and those agents are kind of getting burnt out in a lot of cases people are kind of at their wits end after you know the pandemic and just having to switch to that remote working lifestyle and all the apps that kind of had to change and 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 progress because of that. How can we improve the agent experience? Well, I, I think we start by caring about the agent experience. Bingo. Um, I don't think we're we're even doing that right now. I mean, I, I think we've been we've been in this optimization mentality for a long, long time. Uh, the cost per seat, the cost per ticket. Most of the measurements we use around a service desk or a call center really answer two things, and that is the effectivity of the effectiveness of the process mm. and workforce management. So mm -hmm. nearly everything we ask comes back to workforce management or process. Very little of it has anything to do with the experience of, this, of, the, of the service desk. I like to call them care professionals. <laughs> and and I, I, I'm not saying that they're all doctors and nurses, but you know what? When you have a critical issue, they're the next best thing. And when you call those people, you are thrusting upon them your emotions, your frustrations. Every one of those people come to work every day with the idea of helping somebody else. It's almost like being a nurse, right? They don't get paid big bucks, but they are, they are the face of IT services or the face of the company if it's a call center. And people only call the service desk for two reasons. They want to ask you something or they want to tell you something. Mm -hmm. But what they have in common is anybody who calls a service desk is vested. That's why they call. I worry about the 55% of the enterprise and organizations who don't call. But the ones that do, they, they're vested in you. And the agents want to do their best for them. So I think one of the things that we should be doing more is at the end of every day, I think we should ask our agents, you know, the eight hours that you just worked or whatever it is, was that a good use of your time? Mm. And as you prepare to go home, are you enthusiastic or are you exhausted? Um, and the tools that we gave you, did that help you to be the best savers agent that you can be? These are the three very simple questions that I would ask every day at the end of a shift. Um, we don't. I mean, I, I, I tested this at HDI. Nobody in the room does this. And yet all of those people are by definition HDI professionals, right? So I, I'm with you. I think this is a, this is something we need to do. I think from executive possession, we need to get off of the cost per call, cost per seat, mm -hmm. because I think we are ignoring the value that this 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 organization brings to the entire business. Great points. I also really liked. We spoke recently about this, and I, I really like what you said. Um, scenario based training. And how I think I think nurses and doctors probably leverage this, but the idea is to like get rid of the trauma or or help them to address the the PTSD of support. I'll say right, and I think that's significant. I think there is a lot of burnout. I don't think it necessarily reflects in people being absent. It might reflect in people leaving after a certain period of time, mm. but it certainly shows up in exhaustion. Yeah. And when somebody is exhausted, they're just not at their best. And um, we want, I mean, we want our best people to be at their best because that's when they're going to create the most value for the business that they support. Yeah, that's so true. I can remember days where I was an agent and I would just dread the phone ringing. I would dread picking it up because I was at my wits end, you know, eventually you fear the fact that you're going to have to 
have this conflict with someone over the phone and that can be quite difficult so i I really appreciate you you bringing that to to light and helping us think about new ways of addressing that is fantastic well i tell you matt i am of the generation that when we had a major incident we would just take the phone off the hook (laughs) 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 we'd send it straight to voicemail (laughs) oh my gosh we haven't seen those days in a long time alan Well, thank you, Alan. Uh, Where can people learn more? Where can people connect with you? Well, you know, um, obviously our website, xlacolab.com, is a great place to go. Um, If you're interested in the courseware, uh, HDI USA, HDI Brazil are now offering the courses, both the Essence of Experience, which is a one-day course to get you, you know, get the methodology and the terminology and the concepts, and then the three-day course, which which is a pretty a pretty intensive course to learn the framework and and sort of learn how you can make a difference in your organization as an experienced professional. Those are two things that I think you can do today. We also have XLA TV where we run two channels. It's um, We run one channel, which is really about leadership. It's, it's about where are we going? Uh, where do we want to do? When do we want to go? But the other one is the um, uh, the alchemists, the new alchemists. And so those are the people who are actually doing the work. Those are the GSD people who are in the trenches and they talk about their struggles. You know, people like ABN AMRO, who were one of the pioneers of this. What did they run into? What was the clashes they had? What was the, the challenge around culture and tooling? And so that's another place to go to get more, uh, to get more information. That sounds great. I'm going to tune into that for sure. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for joining today. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. And for our audience, thanks for hitting play, and I'll see you around the way. I'm your host, Matt Barron. You can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn as Matt Barron. Don't forget to leave us some feedback. Let us know we're doing good. Let us know where you'd like to see more. Subscribe to Ticket Volume on your favorite podcast platforms. And thank you for listening to Ticket Volume, a podcast powered by Invigate.